Good morning, everybody. Thanks for uh, coming in today. What a gorgeous day. Looks like the temperatures are warming back up. So uh, we'll enjoy some of the best days of fall today. And uh, I don't know what the Packers are doing right now, but I hope they're ahead. 20 to zero. Oh my gosh. This just in. Maybe. Uh, to keep you guys at home, continuing watching, we'll we'll try to give you updates of the, the score throughout the service. They're playing in London, London, England. Okay, well, let's uh, let's stand up and and uh, start with our joy song. Nothing is impossible. Imagine if a man took wind, nothing is impossible. People laugh, it can't be Let's uh, welcome Joanne Bauman. She's going to be leading as the moderator today. Good morning, everyone, on this beautiful fall day. <laughs> we will start our service with our statement of faith. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life. God the good omnipotent. And our affirmation, thank you God that we have come to this place to release the past, celebrate the present and embrace the future in love, peace, harmony and prosperity. And our congregational affirmation, we at the Unity Center are a loving, diverse, inclusive, spiritual community who come together to demonstrate and live the teachings of Jesus Christ by listening, learning, and empowering ourselves and others. Now for prayer requests, but I do it a little bit differently. 
if you have a prayer request, um, do you want to pass a basket? Um, write it down. And while we're waiting for those requests, I want to call to mind a little story as written by Dr. Bernie Siegel, uh, author of Love, Medicine, and Miracles and Peace, Love, and Healing. Uh, there's a story that he told about a, um, a gal who was very disabled and she was praying for healing. She wanted to be healed. So one of Dr. Siegel's uh, statements is, if nine out of 10 people die of a certain illness, that means one out of 10 survive or heal. Let's find out what those one in 10 do or did, and let's do that. And you can be in the um, category of the one in 10 who get healed. And so in her story, Dr. Siegel reminded her that she had beautiful eyes and beautiful smile and beautiful hair. And although the rest of her body was quite disabled, focus on what was good and what was still obviously very beautiful to our eyes. And so she did that. And guess what? She became healed. It's one of Dr. Siegel's miracle stories. So that's what we need to do to focus on what is still good and how we are still blessed. And then we bring forth the blessing of uh, the miracle healing or other blessings that we need in our life. We need to focus on what is still good. And so in this last week, we've had some wonderful teachings by Reverend Ron and teaching also how to bring forth your blessings in your life. So hopefully there's going to be some wonderful miracle stories or blessing stories that, that come from his teaching. And I hope you have a, a book left for me. I brought my money today. <laughs> So, okay, if you're uh, finished writing your brief requests, uh, okay. So over the years, uh, I've received many blessings in my life. And, and as of recently, uh, more of my answered prayers have come forth. And as I've brought to your attention in some of my Sunday messages that in my retirement plan, I was parting with some of the properties I had that I rented to guys coming out of prison and other people needing to get a new start in life. And the success of that is the apartment building has been sold and that enabled me to buy a new uh, residence <clears throat> closer to church here. And I'm in the process of moving in. <laughs> and I'm very happy with that uh, process as I've been relieved of some of the responsibilities uh, that have gone with this. Uh, so some of our prayer requests this morning, we're asking for healing for Michelle. And another person needs healing, Denise. And Victor in need of healing. And Charlotte is in need of joyful living and Alan for faith and comfort and Linda for peace. And so as each of these requests are made, we trust that blessings come forth for each of the, those who have requested healing and peace and comfort, that we trust that our good is always available to us. And as we ask, we receive. And as we have faith and trust in this, divine process, our blessings come to us. 
in miraculous ways. And we're constantly in gratitude for those blessings. And another request for Shannon for healing. And another one for the family system of healing and restoration. And so we trust that all these good things come to those who ask. And another one. So Helen made a transition this week. And we trust that she's in a glorious state of experience on the other side. And of course, peace for the person who has asked for this. And another request for perfect health. So we trust that all these blessings are coming forth and they're already in the process. And so we put these requests all in our prayer box and they're prayed for every week in our uh, Thursday uh, time of prayer. And then they go to Unity Village for another month of prayer there. Okay, next on our agenda is our daily word on world peace. So who's giving the daily word today? Okay. Thank you. Good morning. World peace. Peace creates beauty in the world. An artist creates beauty out of a spectrum of shades and hues, and the diversity of color adds to the depth of the artwork. In this same manner, the differences in the world show the possibility of splendor when combined in the right way. I envision a world in which all people are accepted exactly as they are. And I set an intention to practice and facilitate goodwill toward others. I behold the world around me and find examples of people and cultures blending and mixing in magnificent ways. The potential for peaceful interaction and coexistence are endless. of kindness, honesty, and healthy communication paint pictures of harmony. As I choose non-judgment and unconditional positive regard, I create peace, good, seek peace, and pursue, pursue it. Psalms 34.14. Thank you. And in order for us to have world peace, it has to start with us. And so one of the lessons in A Course in Miracles is, well, who do you consider your greatest enemy and make peace with that person? And then that is the start of world peace. So next on our agenda this morning, we have some music by our wonderful person, member of our congregation, Kevin. Well, ask and you shall receive because uh, I got, I mentioned I was gonna do a, uh, a few joy songs today and I got some volunteers here to, uh, to sing and play along with me, so. So uh, this is, uh, we spent some time with Reverend Ron in the last week, and this is one of his favorite songs. So uh, I'm, it looks a little small, but I, the, the lyrics are pretty simple. So I think you can sing along with us. And want to stick it right in the middle? Yeah, I do. <laughs> I do too. Okay. 
There we go. Okay. So um, you can either sing you can either sing we are or you can sing I am. And we are as God created us, I am as God created me. So just feel feel free to uh, change it up and we're going to just repeat this several times. So it's a fun song. You can listen to us the first time and then please join in. We are as God created us. In the love, in the light, in the glory. We are as God created us. In the love, in the light, in the glory. In the light, in the love, in the glory. In the light, in the love, in the glory. In the light, in the love, in the glory. We are. In the light, in the love, in the glory. In the light, in the love, in the glory. In the light and the love and the glory we are. We are as God created us. In the love, in the light, in the glory. We are as God created us. In the love, in the light. In the glory, in the light and the love and the glory, in the light and the love and the glory, in the light and the love and the glory, we are. In the light and the love and the glory, in the light and the love and the glory, in the light and the love and the glory, we are. We are as God created us in the love, in the light, in the glory. We are as God created us in the love, in the light, in the glory. Last time through, in the light, in the love, in the glory. In the light of the love and the glory, in the light and the love and the glory, we are. In the light and the love and the glory, we are. In the light and the love and the glory, in the light and the love and the glory, we are. All right. So it's nice to have a whole band up here, isn't it? All right, so we're done. You know, this is very true. We need to even sing what we are. And a few years ago, there was a song that was very popular in country music called Blown Away by Carrie Underwood. And guess what? There was a city in Oklahoma that was literally blown away. And so we need to be singing what we really want to create. So thank you for that beautiful song today. So now we have our guest speaker today, Reverend Ron. And the title of his message is Moving Forward. Welcome, Ron. Let's give him a hand. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'd like to share a story with you. This is a true story. It actually happened in Meridian, Mississippi. This one couple was going to bed one evening and the wife, as she walked past the window, she happened to notice that the light was on in the shed. They had a very large tool shed and all kinds of stuff in it. And she told her husband, she said, you, you left the light on in the, in the shed. So the husband walks out, and just before he gets to the door to open the door, he hears voices coming out of the shed. 
And he's thinking, what in the heck is going on? And he realizes there's at least two people in there. They're talking about what kinds of things are taken from the shed. He goes back into the house. He dials the police. And the operator at the police station says, what's the problem? She says, I have burglars stealing stuff out of my a tool shed. And he gives the address. He says, well, we don't have any cars that could come down right now. It'll probably be about 20, 30 minutes to get anybody down there. And the guy says, 20, 30 minutes, that's ridiculous. He says, we don't have any squad cars. So he thanks the uh, op police operator, hangs up, waits about a minute and a half. He dials the police again. When they answer the phone, he says, uh, you don't have to worry about sending a squad car. I just shot, I just shot the burglars. And he hangs up. Within two and a half minutes, two squad cars come. A helicopter starts coming over here with the floodlights. And basically the police arrive and they arrest the guys. And the, 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 the officer in charge goes up to the guy and says, I thought you said you shot the guys. And he said, I thought you said there was no squad cars available. That's a true story. Anyway, I get such a kick out of, and I use a lot of humor about misunderstandings and miscommunications because that's what our life journey really is about. We have so many misunderstandings and so many, you know, in different interpretations of so much stuff. It's really interesting. I'm just curious, how many people were not here last week? Okay, a couple of us. Okay, so basically, last week we talked about putting God first. And one of the things we did was just basically talk about some different ways that we could um, help ourselves remember about putting God first. Well, one of the things we did in our Wednesday night class, I think it was one of our classes, is um, I have, a, and this is something I've been doing for a while now, and I basically, when I find a penny, I basically put the penny where it says, in God we trust, I put it someplace in my house. And basically, I, got, I actually got to the point where I had literally three to five pennies in every room, my office, I mean, even the bathroom had pennies. And what would happen is every now and then, wherever my head was on whatever journey my head was in, I would see the penny and I would say, oh yeah, God's part of this too. And sometimes I'd be, you know, going into the stuff, the drama stuff that our ego likes to really elicit from us. And so seeing that penny really would help me get recentered. And so um, I gave, I, I, want, I explained this to our class last time. I mistakenly said I had three pennies in my car. Well, I forgot I have a tray on top, so I have seven pennies. And these are all pennies that I find pretty much. So I, I had probably about at least maybe 50, 50 cents worth of pennies throughout my house, basically, when I had a house. And, uh, and so um, what I want to do now is if Dorothy and who, uh, and I'm sorry, I didn't get your name. Mary, if you guys would go ahead and distribute the pennies to your sides of the, of the room. I'm just going to invite you to put this someplace where you will see it. And um, it'll just be a beautiful little gentle reminder. And every now and then it'll help you to get, remember to get centered. Other times it'll help you remember God is in the equation, whatever is going on. So that was just a little tidbit from last week. And we talked a little bit about the dramas and all that stuff that ego likes to create. Okay, so today we're talking about moving forward. Moving forward where, Ron? Well, it's moving forward into our divinity, dear ones. That's what this whole thing was about last week, was waking up to our divinity. And now it's kind of moving forward more into our divinity. Part A is awakening to our true identity. And part B, is living from that awareness. So moving forward into our divinity is where we're going. So we actually live in a very wonderful time here on Classroom Earth. There are more people and organizations that are really waking up to this divine presence that is everywhere present, and that this divine presence is also within all of us. It's within you, dear Sid, within you, dear Susan, with a new dear Julie and Doug and Mary and everybody. So the bottom line is it's a marvelous time. It's a tremendous time because we are in the present. 
Now, it's also a time of great challenge. Our, our global situation now is probably at the highest level of stress and discomfort that it has been in the entire history of humankind. In my opinion, I could be totally wrong. But basically, we got more garbage going on now than we ever had. And so I shared with our, 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 our group that remember the ancient root meaning of the word challenge is oppor oops, opportunity. I got this thing in front of me. I keep thinking that that's where I'm talking. Okay. Anyway, the root part of challenge is opportunity. So a challenge is an opportunity to learn and grow. Okay, remember that these are two different things. Learning is acquiring information, okay? It's head stuff, intellectual stuff, and growing is where we implement something different. We change our behavior. We're doing something different with our life's journey. So I want you to know that Every challenge is an opportunity to learn and grow. Let's affirm that. Every challenge is an opportunity to learn and grow. Let's say that again. Every challenge is an opportunity to learn and grow. I want you to remember that. And it will help you to have the right attitude when things happen in our lives. It will help you to be more aware at a higher level of life, what I call the big picture of life. So the bottom line is we are in a process of awakening to higher and higher levels of consciousness, and that is called being born anew. Now, the Bible starts this whole thing about born anew. I'm not sure if this is the first place, but let me read a section of the Bible. I'm going to give you John chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. And this is where Jesus is basically running into a man called Nicodemus, who is a Jewish religious leader and a Pharisee. So after dark one evening, he came to speak with Jesus, and he said, Rabbi, we all know that God has sent you to teach us, for your miraculous signs are evidence that God is with you. Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. What do you mean? exclaimed Nicodemus. How can an old man go back into his mother's womb and be born again? And Jesus replied, I assure you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. Humans could reproduce, reproduce only human life, but the Holy Spirit gives birth to spiritual life. So here, so don't be surprised when I say you must be born again. So basically, this born again or born anew is really a spiritual birth. It's not, it has nothing to do with our physical body. It has to do with our consciousness. So the bottom line is, are we willing to be born anew? Are we willing to be born anew? Yeah. Okay. So by majority of one to nothing, we'll take it. Yes, we are willing to be born anew. So that means, now that one person is speaking for everybody. So is everybody willing to step outside of your comfort zone? Are you, oh, I like that. They're very, very enthusiastic even. Okay, so this is good. I'm glad, I'm glad you're doing this. This is great. Are you willing to move to a higher level of consciousness? Okay, are you willing to actively live our true identity? Okay, well, this is good. Well, now for the folks that weren't here, and anyway, we're going to get to that. I'm going to jump ahead and do this right now. We have a true identity. Every one of us has the same true identity. And this is what our true identity is. I am the sacred name of the divine. I am, okay? You always be very careful what you put after I am. I am a beautiful, beloved, child, um, empowered 
child of God. Let's say that together. I am a beautiful, beloved, child, empowered child of God. I explained to, to our, our class uh, this during the week that I, I've been doing it 40 years the other way. I am a beautiful, beloved child of God, and I only in the last year added the empowered, and habit patterns are hard to break. <laughs> so, <laughs> I keep falling into forgetting to say empowered, but I should read my notes better. Okay, so let's go ahead and say that again. Our true identity is, I am a beautiful, beloved, empowered child of God. I invite you to tell the person closest to your true identity and give them an opportunity to tell you their true identity. You guys are really scattered all over the place, aren't you? If you can. <clears throat> okay, dear ones, let's go ahead and say our true identity once again out loud. I am a beautiful, beloved, empowered child of God. We are all divine beings having a human experience. To be born anew, we must be willing to go into new territory. And I'm going to throw a couple things out here in just a couple seconds, but everybody enthusiastically even said they're willing to step outside of our comfort zones. This is really exciting because a lot of people resist stepping outside of their comfort zones. So congratulations for being open to doing that, folks. All right. So anyway, we have this thing about going into new territory. On ancient maps, all the uncharted territory, all the uncharted seas were called terra incognito, which meant unknown territory. And many of these old maps would actually have drawings of dragons and sea monsters. And it was basically to remind the sailors that we don't know what's out there. Could be scary stuff. And our ego loves to throw in fear whenever there's an unknown. Have you ever noticed that? When you have an unknown in front of you, fear a lot much, comes up much of the time. That's an ego trap. It's always an ego trap. A way to counter that is to know your true identity. What's your true identity? I am a beautiful, beloved, empowered child of God. Now, when you say the of God, what does that kind of a connection give you in consciousness with God? A, a real solid connection, right? You're God's beloved. Remember that? We said last, let's say it again. Let's say the word beloved. Beloved. Feel the energy and let's say it again. Beloved. The bottom line is we are loved unconditionally. And that's what our relationship. We are the literally the image and likeness of the divine. So we have this wonderful connection. But these ancient maps were had a, a, a little element of fear in them for the um the dragons that were drawn on there and sea monsters and all that stuff ego not only encourages fear especially in unknown areas i remember now <clears throat> i got involved with ministry basically right out of college and i mean i jumped in with both feet uh, in, in several things and ever since you know there was many years before i even surrendered becoming a minister uh because that was not something i consciously wanted and the bottom line is everything that i was doing it i was a volunteer spiritual leader for five years that's how i started out um, of a study group i was a volunteer musician also as the music director as well but what happened was everything that ministry was doing came effortless to me I mean, literally effortless. Everything was just flowing, beautiful, and all that stuff. I didn't hit my first bump until we started doing our, in, in ministerial school, when we had to do chaplaincy. 
and our, our class had to do this entire hospital in uh, Can the Kansas City area. I can't remember the name of the hospital, but uh, so anyway, we did the, the entire hospital one day a week. We were, we were the chaplains on all floors of the hospital. And that was the first time I ever had a challenge in ministry. And the second time, and this is the funniest one, it was just before ordination. It was like I opened this door and everything, and this is the visual I had many times, everything on the other side of this door was pitch black. I didn't even know if there was a floor that I was going to be stepping into, you know, stepping onto. I didn't know if that was, you know, if there was nothing there and I was just tumbled and fall and fall and fall. So that I had that vision for a very long time until spirit gave me a tremendous blessing. We went on our uh, field trip. We went to um, California and basically 11 churches fed the entire ministerial class. Nine of the meals, I'm not exaggerating, nine of the meals were lasagna. Lasagna and pizza have been my lifetime favorite foods. And when, when that happened, it was like such a sigh of relief. It was God telling me, Ron, don't worry. I got nothing but the best for you. And so the bottom line is my, one of my classmates, Chuck, I mistakenly told him about this with me. And he's even to this day, when we see each other, he's still upset with me that we had to eat lasagna nine out of 11. Oh, and this is the other thing. The day before we left on our trip, guess what Unity Village was serving for lunch? lasagna and when we got back like 12 days later or whatever it was guess what we had on the menu and even in the flight they had lasagna and chicken of course all the chicken was gone before half the flight um was you know got their meals because all of my clients everybody wanted chicken <laughs> except for me i was fine with the lasagna but anyway um so we have scary things come up and when scary things come up what do we do we have to remember who we are. That's why I invite you to say your true identity frequently, many, many times, because the bottom line is we need to remember the bigger picture. And that's really the biggest challenge that we have. We get into these um, ego traps because we don't remember the big picture. And the big picture is God is always, not only in the situation, God is always within me. God is always within you, Linda, within you, within you. God is always within you, Ann, within you, Kendall. I mean, God is always within us, and we forget it. We forget it because our ego is focused on the outer, and it loves to judge by appearances, and unknowns create fears. We have all this garbage going on. In fact, one of the things that um, I, I told you that all challenges are really opportunities, right? One of my great challenges, I, I got a lot of lessons driving on highways. One of my great challenges was um, I drive a little bit over the speed limit. I used to drive a lot over the speed limit. Now I only do about five over, five, six maybe. But the bottom line is one of my pet peeves is always people that were driving in a passing lane on an on a interstate highway or something like that, and they're going below the speed limit. That would just like, come on, buddy, really? <laughs> and, and then some of them go, even with the car, that they're both going below the speed limit and you can't pass. It's like, oh, man, that used to, that used to really ruffle my feathers. And then, see, that was a challenge for me. Okay. And so I always saw it as a challenge. And then one day, um, oh, I, I, when I, I was the volunteer spiritual leader at the Unity of Gainesville for five years, and when we grew to 25 to 30 people, I knew we were ready to hire a minister. So I actually hired our first full-time minister. Remember, I was the volunteer spiritual leader. So I hired Joe and Joe and I had a beautiful, loving relationship. Joe had retired as an engineer and then went to ministerial school. So Joe literally was not only a father figure. I mean, he could, he could have been probably my grandfather. I don't even know. But the bottom line is... Um, I was driving with Joe in his car one day. Generally, Joe was always driving with me. I was the president of the board after I, after I hired Joe. I was still president of the board that kept electing me. And bottom line was, so I'm, Joe and I are going someplace in his car for the first and only time ever Joe would throw. He's driving in the 
third lane, not the first lane or the middle lane, the third lane, left lane, but well below speed limit. And I'm thinking, oh my God, Joe is the kind of guy that pisses me off. <laughs> it's like, it's like, are you kidding me? It's Joe. Oh no. So that really helped me realize every elderly person who is unaware of driving courtesies is somebody's Joe. It is somebody's Joe. And I thought, wow, how could I, how could I be so harsh with dear Joe? I mean, he was, I mean, he was literally an angelic person, very, very steeped in prayer and very centered. He, he did a fabulous job starting our prayer ministry and all that stuff. So anyway, bottom line is we literally, if we look at an opportunity and remember, I'm sorry, a challenge, and we remember that every challenge is an opportunity, we will learn and grow from it. If we try and discover what is the fear, Ron, what is the thing that you know, upsets you? What ruffles your feathers and come from a higher consciousness of our true identity. And then if we keep saying this true identity thing, pretty soon we're going to know who everybody else is in the world, including the terrorists, including Putin. And now here's something that I invited you to be willing to step out of your comfort zone. I'm going to jump into that when we get to our OHO. Bottom line we have a tremendous opportunity to wake up to the divine presence at a higher level. So there's two verses in scripture that really speak to this. One is John chapter 14, verse 12. Jesus said, truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do and greater works than these will he or she do. And the other one is Colossians 1, chapter 1, verse 27. I'm laughing because this is the only one I ever got wrong in all the uh, e &O, Arizona emissions thing. That Not, not Arizona. Is it? Our, um, we had to go through several panels throughout ministerial school where several ministers would you'd go into a room and, um, and you'd have to answer questions. This is, this, is, this is the only one I ever got wrong. The mystery that has been hidden for generations, but is now revealed, Christ in you, the hope of glory. So Christ in you. So let's look at this. First one, whoever believes in me, not Jesus the man. You know, Jesus the man has, is not the same as Christ the divine. Christ is not Jesus' last name. In fact, the first time it's ever used in Scripture Basically, he's asking his disciples, who do they, the townspeople, say that I am? And they're talking about all these prophets from the Old Testament. And then Jesus says his disciples, but who do you, my disciples, say that I am? And Peter said, thou art the Christ, the anointed of God. So Christ is the divine pattern, the image and likeness of God, if you will, encoded in everyone. That's the Christ. Okay, now the Christ has different names by different cultures. The Northern Buddhists call it the Buddha. Our Native American sisters and brothers call it the Great Spirit. Um, there's the, the Christians call it, well, the Christians that are into the metaphysics, they call it the Christ. But basically the bottom line is um, it's really the divine, our highest power, if you will. Um, it's divinity. I call it divine divinity and love. Those are my favorite three that I use. But sadly, through our ego or our ignorance, humans have fought more wars for thousands of years over the name of this divine presence. It's the same thing. If there's only one and, you know, the Hindus are acknowledging this and the Muslims are acknowledging this and the Christians are acknowledging this. What is the name? What difference does it make? Why do you speak English? Because you are born in the United States or England. Why do you speak French? Because you were born in France. Why do you speak German? Because you were born in Germany. The bottom line is wherever, wherever you come out of your faith path, you're going to have a, there's going to be a different name. What I told you last week, keep your eyes on the ball, right? There used to be, a, when I was a kid, there was a, 
a TV show that the ball would bounce on top of the word you're supposed to sing. I can't remember the name of it, but Mitch Miller. Okay, is that was that they had a red ball bouncing on top of the words? Okay, I, I I've been telling people for years, keep your eye on the big picture, keep your eye on the ball. Don't get like last week I said, don't ruffle your feathers if somebody says beloved and you say beloved, or mm -hmm. vice versa. It guys get out of these ego traps. They're all ego traps. Your way is no better than anybody else's, okay? It's all the same stuff. So get over it. Okay. So anyway, as we understand our true identity and we live from that awareness, we will overcome a lot of this outside garbage stuff that creates all the dramas, while the egos encourage us to create dramas. So I have... What we, I've started doing this many, many years ago, I have an OHO, which is an optional homework opportunity. And so here's our OHO for this week. Say your true identity several times each day. And I, I think I may have said this to you, if not, it was our, our midweek classes. I, I asked you to, when you're at a red light, instead of worrying about the red light, when is it going to change to a green light or what's, you know, daydreaming? Basically, use that dead time for empowerment time. Say your true identity a few times. Okay. Can, and the second part is to continue until you truly know your true ID. And this is the truth that will set you free. Okay. You've heard that truth will set you free. That's the truth. Know who you are. Know the big picture. Know how connected you are to the divine, that the divine is within you. And there's nothing out there to fear. There is nothing out there to fear when you are centered in your truth. Okay, the next one, and this is one of my big pet peeves, is how we misuse our judgment faculty. Stop misjudging people. Everybody. Is God everywhere present? Is God present in Paris? Is God present in Putin? Okay, is God present in political parties? Oh, here's where you're going to step out of your comfort zone. Here's where you're going to step out. I have heard many people, I mean, be so upset with the Democrats, so upset with, the, with Trump, so upset. And this is one of the things that really sh actually shocked me. I have a dear friend that I used to visit in Chicago once in a while when I was doing work in the Chicago area. He would, uh, he would always, we had a good, good enough friendship. He would always invite me to stay at his place. Anyway, what happened is um, this was not this last election, but the one before where Hillary and Trump and all that. So anyway, he was so angry that I didn't vote for Hillary. I mean, I had never, and I've known him for about 13 years. I had never seen him so upset with anybody as he was with me for not my not voting for Hillary Clinton. Now, I'm actually a libertarian. I really don't like government being in everybody's business as much as they are. However, I basically understand that people, I mean, even the politicians you don't like, are they children of God? Well, stop hating them. Stop hating the Republicans. Stop hating the Democrats, okay? I have to keep getting myself centered because I'm seeing our country losing our personal freedoms at a extremely alarming rate for me. I'm very patriotic. Bottom line is, but you know what? They're, they're doing the best they know how. They're just unconscious when they're taking away our personal freedoms. So I have to bless everybody. In fact, I have, a, I have kind of a global blessing that I used to do at the end. I used to have free online meditations for several years. And I just recently just continue those because I'm on the road. And sometimes I actually didn't have ability to get online because I was driving in an area that I didn't even have cell phone service. So it's like, okay. So anyway, stop judging by appearances. In fact, stop misjudging anything. Don't ever judge anybody because first of all, we usually attach condemnation with our judgment, right? And the other thing is that's not what we have a judgment faculty for. Our judgment faculty is to help us to discern what is best for Ron Palumbo. Well, you don't have to discern for me. You're going to discern what's best for you. I use my judgment faculty when I use it wisely 
I use it to discern what's best for me, which choice is best for me, which, which direction is best for me, you know. So basically, use your judgment faculty for your own personal wisdom, okay? Don't ever point at somebody else and start judging them because they're a Democrat or a Republican or a, a, a Sufi or a whatever. Okay, that's your homework oppor opportunity. So with that said and done, let's go ahead and get comfortable in our seats for just a couple minutes. And just be aware that we have this amazing divine presence all around us. This divine presence is also within us. And as we rest in this divine energy field, I invite us to take a gentle, deeper inhalation. Taking another gentle inhalation. Be aware that this divine energy that you are inhaling is intermingling with the divine energy within you. the words you hear to resonate throughout your being, to be the words of your being. I release all outer thoughts, all outer concerns. I invite my mind to relax in the sanctuary of peace. mind relaxes and I invite my entire body temple to relax in the sanctuary of peace. I release all stress, all tightness, all tension. I am aware the peace that goes beyond understanding. I feel a deep abiding peace within me. My breathing becomes more relaxed, more rhythmic. beautiful sanctuary of peace. I am one with the divine. I relax in this awareness for a few moments in the silence.
as we become more aware of this beautiful, comfortable sanctuary. I invite us to take a little bit of a deeper inhalation and gently exhale as we are ready. I become more aware of my body temple, the comfortable seat in which I am sitting. Taking another gentle, deeper inhalation, I bring my full attention back to this present moment. Feeling blessed by the divinity within, the divinity all around. And for a moment, I invite you to bring any loved ones into this consciousness that we'd like to hold in love and in light. If you're so guided, you're welcome to whisper out their name or just hold the name in your mind, in your consciousness. expanding our awareness to our beautiful country. We hold our entire country in love and in light and all of the leaders of our nation. We bless our leaders, acknowledging the divinity in each person and calling forth this divinity to quicken minds and hearts to the highest and best for all citizens of our country. We also hold all people of all nations in this consciousness and all the leaders of all the nations, acknowledging our oneness as beautiful, beloved children of God. Call forth spirit to quicken all minds and hearts to move to a higher consciousness in all of the thoughts, words, and activities of the leaders of all nations. Moving our globe into a higher level of harmony, divine order, peace, and cooperation. Thank you, sweet spirit, for your loving presence, guiding and blessing all people throughout our planet. And lastly, we hold God's ministry at Unity Center in this awareness of perfect love, perfect harmony, and perfect grace, blessing all ministries that are part of this ministry. And all of the angels who do the work behind the scenes and in front of the scenes of this ministry. Thank you, God, for your loving presence, guiding and blessing our dear Unity Center. And so it is. Amen. my 
My penny collection story. Every time I see a penny on the ground, I pick it up and I have a um, place I put it in at home as a reminder that I'm blessed from, from God. And every time that I am asked to do something for someone and I really don't want to do it, I might find nickels, dimes, and quarters or more. Uh, this week, I took my collection of uh, pennies to the bank, and that was $14 worth when I put it in the coin counter. And that's not including the nickels, dimes, and quarters that I will take another time. So that sign from those coins on the ground is that God provides. And sometimes in my ministry to the, the poor and guys coming out of prison requires doing things, I go beyond my normal desire to give. So that's my story. Okay, now is the time for our uh, giving of our offerings for the church. Hold your gift in your hand and say the prayer with me. There is no lack or limitation Freely I give and freely I receive from God's abundance. I am blessed as I give and unity is blessed in receiving. So someone's going to pass the baskets. And there are other ways that you can uh, give through the U.S. mail to Unity Center here on 73rd Street or via the website or via PayPal at Unity Center here. So we are blessed with your offering to keep the church, the lights on and the air conditioning on in hot weather. <laughs> and now we're going to have some more music from Kevin and his group with him today. So we've got another song that you can sing with us. You can you can skip the intro though. Um, you'll you'll understand why. Um, anyways, I, Reverend Ron is about to head back to uh, Florida, so I decided to wear this shirt to ease his transition. <laughs> was a reason. And I, I thought that worked well. But and and Ron also he he loves the joy song, so we wanted to sing a a classic. I release and I let go. So, we'll get started. There was a time in my life Thought I had to do it all by myself Didn't know the grace of God was sufficient Didn't know the love of God was at hand but now I say, if you are discouraged and struggling just to make it through another day, you've got to let it go. I release and I let go. I let the spirit run my life. My heart is open wide. And I'm only here for God. God. No, no more strife. With my faith, I see the light. I am free in the spirit. Yes, I'm only here for God. I release and now let go. The spirit of my life. My heart is open wide, and I'm only here for God. God. No more trouble, no more strife. With the faith I see the light, I am free in the spirit. Yes, I'm only here for God. Sing, 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 sing,
I released, I let go. I let the spirit run my life. And my heart is open wide. I am only here for God. No more trouble, no more strife. With my faith, I see the light. I am free in the spirit. Yes, I'm only here for God. In the spirit, I am only evil God. So let's give Ron a, 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 a hand for being up here for the last week and a half. And, and thank you for all you've done. And uh, safe travels down to Florida. And uh, come back again sometime. Thank you, Kevin, and your group for that peppy song, reminding us again of our path in life. And earlier when I met, mentioned that song by Carrie Underwood, as the line went in the song, there's not enough wind in Oklahoma or enough rain in Oklahoma to wipe away the pain. And that's what the song was about. And there was a tornado that wiped up a city in Oklahoma. So again, we need to be careful about the songs that we sing. And so these very positive songs that are reminders of our uh, path in life and who we really are. So to bless our guests, we are grateful for the gifts that you have offered today. And may they be multiplied as the loaves and fishes have been multiplied in Jesus' time to bless this congregation in this church and this community. We are thankful for them, amen. <clears throat> now time for some announcements. So what's going on this in the next week? Reverend Patty Pippia will be our guest speaker next week on the subject of bondage or liberty. It's your choice, bondage to the ego or freedom in God as the Course in Miracles would say. And the new book study, American Dirt by Jeannie Cubbins. That's Thursdays from 9.30 to 11, come in person or join virtually. And that is followed by the silent unity prayer at 11 o'clock and again in person or virtually. And usually on Sundays following the service at approximately 11.45 is A Course in Miracles, which is a course in miracle-minded thinking to focus on the principles and universal love and forgiveness and as I add, it's teaching us to think like Jesus, and that's Jesus' message of how he thought. And I'm usually here to lead the group if anyone wants to come or stay. Yes? So we probably won't be doing that, the course today. And that you'll be doing an energy work. Come on, out. come right up. Come on. We're basically going to just teach a couple of different ways that we could direct energy to ourselves or to our loved ones for healing. And then what we set up is a what I call the sweet seat, and everybody is welcome to come and take their turn sitting in the sweet seat, where everybody will be directing healing energy to that person. So that'll be that'll be right after we're going to have a short break. Uh, uh, I know there's some food out there, and, and uh, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> the th the thing in the pot that looks like kind of a soupy thing that's it, it's actually a lot of it's organic stuff. It's beans and onions and organic kiwi, quinoa and brown rice and things like that. So, um, but, but there's some stuff out there. So do that. And then last thing, I just want to mention. I have an entire table set up out in that hall. 
the that's all love offerings out there's one side the left side is all new stuff the right side is all used stuff but there's really good books and some of those gifts um, i actually buy a bunch of stuff for different people and a couple of them are, were left over because i gave out all the ones i wanted to give out and then i come across another gift that i'm going to give so basically i have a few odds and ends but they're all brand new on the left side is uh, like even a a, a wool muffler um, or you guys call it a scarf i'm not sure but it, it's it's a man's it's a man's scarf it's really pretty uh black black and gray checker but anyway so any kind of a love offering i'm trying to downsize because everything i have to carry is in my car now <laughs> thank you ron <clears throat> okay and the church also has a website that you can see services and advertisements on the bulletin board or for positive information visit the inspiring insights and for the latest guided meditation visit the classes lab and to view past sunday services go to unitycenternowaukee.com and the Life Journey Group meetings the second and fourth Monday of each Monday from 6.30 to 8.15. Just bring yourself with an open mind and a warm heart. Volunteers are needed for the activities committee, greeters and kitchen help, garden angels to weed and water, and even once a month is helpful. Reach out to Diane. We have, we have a couple new volunteer opportunities that just came up uh, the last couple of days. Um, Nat is going to be unable to continue to help us out here at church because his job is just too busy. So we're looking for any brave volunteers who would be willing to be trained on the soundboard for one Sunday a month. And he also sends out the uh, weekly e blast that tells all the classes that are going on and who the next week's minister will be. And um, that once you understand how that little system works, it's not too complicated. It takes about, oh, 15 minutes a, a week to put it together and, and send it out. If there's anybody that's tech savvy at all that would be willing to be trained on that, um, that would be great. So we are looking for those volunteers as well. And one last thing, we added some extra lines to our closing prayer. So don't do the whole thing by memory. Take a look at one of the screens at the very end of the service. Thank you. Okay, is there anything else? Well, there's a note here that we are also affirming for full and complete finances and appropriate contractors to do the parking lot. <clears throat> and we affirm the right and appropriate minister to lead us into the next chapter of, the, of this church. And I really want to congratulate Kevin and others who have brought together all the volunteers uh, to keep this going every week and to keep the church going in general, paying the bills and, and so forth. <clears throat> okay, now it's time for our peace song, Let There Be Peace on Earth. So you want to rise? And... <laughs>
we have available chaplains to pray with you personally after service. Linda will be available and Okay, two chaplains available. Now our prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The wisdom of God clearly guides us. The life of God renews and heals us. The grace of God blesses us always. The presence of God watches over us wherever we are, God is, and so it is. Have a blessed week, everyone.